Frodo is captured by the orcs of Mordor. Denethor, in a fit of madness and despair, is about to join the still living Faramir atop a funeral pyre. The gates of Minas Tirith are broken and its walls overrun, the foes of Gondor wreaking havoc and death within the streets of the White City. Gandalf himself is unhorsed, his staff broken, his failure appearing complete, but then... <laughs> Rohan has arrived. The sun, previously hidden behind the black pall that spread from Mordor across the land of Gondor, is beginning to rise. It appears there may yet be hope for the world of men. But as the Rohirrim crests the hill and look down upon the hordes of Mordor, the Nazgul flying overhead and the flames burning within Minas Tirith, we see shock, horror, and dread upon the faces of Theoden, and Eowyn and Merry. This is what they feared. The White City, ever a bastion of strength against the might of Mordor, overrun with tens of thousands of orcs waiting their chance to tear it apart. This is not a fight the Rohirrim can win. Nonetheless, Eowyn tries to embolden Merry. Courage, Merry. Courage for our friends. Eowyn does not feel brave, though she has awaited an opportunity such as this, a chance to die gloriously in battle her entire life. Now that such a moment is upon her, she finds herself far more afraid than she'd anticipated. Merry, who himself begged Theoden to ride with the Rohirrim, also finds himself daunted by the might of Mordor that lies ahead of him. As the orcs move to prepare for battle against his riders, Theoden steals himself and pushes away the fears that have assailed him. He knew that riding to Gondor's aid would mean a swifter end to the war, one way or another, and he can't not retreat now, even though it means leading only 6,000 Rohirrim against the whole host of Mordor. There is no darkness that light cannot drive out. The Rohirrim have brought the dawn with them. The night of Mordor will end whether or not these riders, these men who have sworn allegiance to their king, who will follow him into battle and certain death will be there to see it. This is it. This is the end and they will ride to meet their end head on. The men of Rohan will not sit and wait for the forces of Mordor to come for them after Minas Tirith is thrown down and Gondor destroyed. They will not fortify their cities and hope to hold out as long as they can. The Rohirrim will ride into the end of all things. At first, Eowyn flinches, pulling close to Merry, instinctively wanting to protect him from the dark and somber chorus, from the inexorable doom that approaches. But then... Mary joins in. This hobbit, this simple halfling who loves pipeweed, beer, and five meals a day, adds his voice to those of the war-hardened riders of Rohan and inspires Eowyn to join them as well. The whole host now with one voice proclaiming their refusal to fear, their acceptance of their fate. And this moment is so much more beautiful than that, and maybe even more beautiful than Jackson even intended. Death in Tolkien's world is not merely an inevitability for men, it is a gift to them. Tolkien writes in the first chapter of the Silmarillion, but the sons of men die indeed and leave the world. Death is their fate, the gift of Iluvatar, which as time wears, even the powers shall envy. But Melkor has cast his shadow upon it and confounded it with darkness and brought forth evil out of good and fear out of hope. While the elves are bound to Arda, to the world, their fates intertwined with it until its end, men are meant for something more. Death is not the end for them, but merely a passage from one life to the next, in which they, perhaps not until the end of time, will participate in the second music of the Ainur, the creation of a new and perfect earth. Men were supposed to embrace death, but their view of it was twisted by Melkor, so they feared it, seeking long life and even immortality such as belonged to the elves. These discordant desires would cause the downfall of Numenor and weaken the race of men, degrading their ability to resist the Dark Lord and his servants. Though they may not even know it, the Rohirrim, with their cry of death, do not simply defy their own fears, do not merely declare in one word with one voice that Melkor, the corrupter and deceiver, has no power over them, but they accept the gift of Iluvatar, their creator and father, who has destined them for far more than they know. As the charge begins, we see on Theoden's face a moment of hesitation, doubt, and fear, but second Seconds later, we see him again, a top snowman, breaking free of his host, gaining speed as he charges toward the forces of Mordor, the first of the Rohirrim into the fray. He is not a man to lead from the rear. He is done hiding within the keep. Now, he truly leads his riders into battle. This is a man. This is a leader. This is a king. A king no longer afraid to be who he must be. This is why we read and watch fantasy. We do not want these stories and characters to reflect our own world. We want them to inspire us, to give us hope, to make us want to be more than we are. Though the arrows rain down upon the Rohirrim, smiting many a horse and rider, 
they do not falter. The orcs show a cruel joy as they shoot, hoping to break the rider's spirits, but the very opposite happens. The resolve of the Rohirrim is strengthened, and they charge forward with a fervor that strikes fear into the black hearts of the orcs. It is not mere men that descend upon the armies of Mordor, but an unstoppable force of nature, a tidal wave that surges forward relentlessly, and none shall survive in its wake. As the two armies are about to meet, we are presented with a sweeping overhead shot showing the incredible scale of the battle that is mere seconds away. The size of the two forces, thousands of Rohirrim versus tens of thousands of orcs, is truly mind-boggling. This shot gives us one last glance before we dive into the fray to admire the courage of the Rohirrim as they plunge willingly to meet their doom. And yet, it is the orcs who see their own doom riding swiftly, unstoppably toward them. They show visible fear. They stumble and stagger as the tsunami of horse and man, of spear and sword, descends upon them. For a few brief moments, the music cuts away letting us appreciate and relish in the sounds of battle alone. <laughs> the clashing of weapons, the thud of bodies hitting horse and ground, the cries of the riders and of their fallen foes, and most of all, the unceasing hoofbeats of the Rohirrim. The music returns as the charge continues, the previously confident and seemingly invincible forces of Mordor routed in disarray, Theoden and his knights pressing ever forward through the ranks of the enemy. A glorious victory, it may seem, and yet the final shot shows us the great host of Mordor still before them. We know, even in this moment of triumph, that still much remains to be won, and that a high price will have to be paid for that victory. In barely four minutes, Peter Jackson, Howard Shore, Bernard Hill, and every actor or extra involved involved in this scene inspires us in a way that I've never seen before nor since. With its themes of good versus evil and courage in the face of overwhelming odds, its beautiful and inspiring score, and the sheer scope and power of its action, the ride of the Rohirrim is, to my mind, the greatest scene in cinematic history. What do you think? What elements do you love about the scene that I didn't touch on? Do you agree that this is as good as it gets, or what scene would you rank above this one? Let me know.